mysterious wrong way crash on the freeway, the one in which a mother uh, driving killed eight people, including four children. The crash, and friends and family frantically tried to locate Diane Schuler. 2009, one of the most devastating road accidents occurred in New York State history on the Tacoma State Parkway. Diane Schuler had just left the campground where she had been vacationing at with her family, heading back to her home in Long Island a drive which she had made many times before, but four hours later she would be spotted driving full speed in the wrong direction down the highway. It was a tragedy with multiple lives lost and the question still remains over a decade later. Why? What was wrong with Diane on the afternoon of July 26, 2009? Warren Hans saw he had an incoming call from his sister Diane. Diane Schuler had taken his three daughters along with her own on a camping trip and that morning they had planned to drive back home. When he answered the call, surprisingly he didn't hear his sister's voice but in fact his eight-year-old daughter, Emma, who sounded panicked. The child worryingly explained to her dad that Diane was having trouble seeing when driving and she wasn't speaking clearly. Diane briefly got to the phone and said she was feeling disorientated and had foggy vision. Warren could hear his sister slurring words and immediately knew something was wrong. He told her to pull over and stay off the road and that he would drive out to her. Oddly, when Warren got to the spot where Diane said she had pulled over, she wasn't there. The unimaginable was about to happen in an area called Westchester County, which had a pretty decent driving record and hadn't seen a major accident since the 30s when a bus veered off an embankment and took 20 lives. Sadly, that 75-year streak of minimal to none accidents was about to come to an end that day. But first, let's go back to the morning of the July 26th. Diane had been camping at the Hunter Lake Campground in Parksville, New York. She went with her husband, Daniel, their two children and her three nieces. As planned, the morning they got ready and left on the road to head back home in their minivan around 9 a.m. With all the children towed piled in the van was her five-year-old son, Brian, her two-year-old daughter, Erin and her three nieces, eight-year-old Emma seven-year-old Allison and five-year-old Kate. The group was squashed into her brother Warren's red Ford minivan while, while her husband Daniel followed behind in a truck with the family dock. For most of the road trip it had started off with no problems, and they did their various road trip traditions of stopping at McDonald's for breakfast and usual gas stations for bathroom breaks and snacks. As they made their way down New York Thruway, Diane called her brother to let him know that traffic was getting bad and the ETA was later than expected. Other drivers along the same Thruway were calling 911 to report some troubling things that were seen in front of them. Several eyewitnesses reported that there had been a woman in a red minivan who was driving erratically, tailgating cars, flashing their lights and honking their horn and driving in between two lanes. Some also reported that they had seen a woman pulled over and was on all fours, appearing to be vomiting shortly after the first call with her brother. Diane made it across the Tappan Zee Bridge and onto the Taconic State Parkway. Two hours later around 1 p.m. Warren received another call from Emma, where she would tell him there's something wrong with Aunt Diane. Around half one in the afternoon, 911 operators received numerous amount of calls about the minivan driving the wrong way up the exit ramp and onto the highway. The calls were piling up. Witnesses from the calls were saying the minivan had been driving up the wrong way on the highway going around 80 miles an hour for roughly two miles. Cars were swerving to avoid colliding with Diane. However, she collided head-on with a Chevrolet Trailblazer in a matter of three minutes eight lives were lost with four of them being young children. A total of 11 people were involved in the tragic accident. Seven victims were pronounced dead at the scene. Another victim would later succumb to their injuries at the hospital. After investigations, it was later determined that the children had not been buckled in at the back properly. All three persons in the vehicle Diane collided with unfortunately did not survive. Miraculously, two passengers from the third vehicle involved only suffered minor injuries. Diane's five-year-old son Brian and third niece initially made it out of the crash alive but sadly passed away later due to their injuries. Brian had suffered head trauma and multiple broken bones and was the only survivor from the minivan but remembered nothing from the accident. The drivers who witnessed the accident jumped out of their cars as soon as it happened and rushed to help. 
pulled Diane and the kids out of the vehicle. Witnesses had claimed that when Diane was being pulled out of the minivan a broken bottle of vodka was seen on the floor. Nine days after, the crash investigation determined that Diane had in fact been heavily intoxicated at the time of the crash. The toxicology reported that she was nearly double the legal limit, nearing at blackout status. From the report it made authorities believe that she had been drinking from the bottle before the crash and discovered she also had high levels of THC in her system. We will never know what happened in the lead up to the crash, and this case still baffles people to this day. Reports however lined up pretty well with the eyewitness accounts given, from her erratic driving, pulling over to be sick to the intoxication levels. Despite the overwhelming amounts of evidence her family insisted there must have been some mistake as Diane was described as a supermom and would never do anything to endanger the kids. Daniel also said she didn't drink during their trip and didn't like drinking that much which was backed up by various people. Even employees who had interacted with Diane during their trip agreed with Daniel including one who claims to have had a long chat with Diane. If she was truly sober all that time it must mean Diane had drank excessively on her journey back. There was a theory that started to develop was Diane was self-medicating as she had a bad toothache and was apparently seen rubbing her jaw a lot throughout the day and complaining of pain at one of the gas stations they stopped at. She had attempted to buy some medicine and the employee said she seemed fine and didn't appear high or drunk. So could the alcohol found have been her solution to ease some pain? Daniel, her husband eventually gave in and said she did drink a little during the trip and did occasionally use MJ but never to extreme amounts claiming to only be used to help her sleep at nights. Daniel's sister later claimed that Diane smoked on a regular basis, and as hard as her family fought they couldn't stop investigators from ruling the crash a homicide from negligent driving. Due to its high level of publicity due to the nature of the crash new laws in New York were put in place. The private investigator that Daniel had hired also was suspicious and refused to believe the mom of the year. Would just wake up one morning and decided to end it all. Many people believe Diane was struggling with addiction and drinking was how she was coping with stress. Diane had a troubling childhood. Her mother passed away when she was nine year old and being the eldest sibling her dad expected her to step in as the mother of the household. Having to raise her younger siblings while cooking and cleaning which was a lot of pressure for anyone at such a young age. Which obviously would have long-standing trauma into her adulthood. Diane also never got a break from motherhood as when she was with Daniel they did opposite shifts and she would often be the one caring for the kids. Her liver did not show signs of long-term alcohol damage so this theory was thrown out. The next theory was that Diane had a mental breakdown and under so much stress and pressure she suddenly snapped and couldn't take it anymore. But I guess we will never 100% truly know what was the reason behind this horrific accident.